I'm Megan Kelly, live from the world headquarters of Fox News in New York City, and coming up tonight on The Kelly File. Emotions run high at a hearing for the new health care law. What are our options now? We don't have any options. Julie explains how this new law is affecting her family. Plus, the Kelly file investigation into why the White House failed to tell the truth when the president's uncle ended up in custody. There was no evidence that they had met. There was, uh, and uh, that was what was conveyed. But that's not the story now. And exclusive tonight, a well-known Washington whistleblower has new information on what he calls some controversial hires. The Kelly File starts now. Who was that? <laughs> We're going to muddle through another night together. And breaking this evening, the administration has just been forced to confirm what we reported to you a couple of days ago. Tens of thousands of Americans who think they have health insurance under Obamacare may discover on January 1st that they do not. After days of refusing to release the stats on the problems that have been plaguing healthcare.gov, the administration has now announced, under pressure from the press, that the enrollments of one out of every four people in the months of October and November were botched. At least one out of every four. Now, since then, they say at least one out of every 10 federal applications have had problems since the fix. And they think the number is higher in the states, the state exchanges. A reporter pressed the agency in charge of these exchanges, the federal exchange, for a solution to this mess. People don't know. They're, they think they've got the coverage. They don't have the coverage. The insurer has got some botched form. It doesn't even have a name, so it can't, it can't call the person to tell them it didn't work for you, and here was the answer. But you're not saying that everyone should call. You're not suggesting that, urging them strongly, despite the fact that you're talking about a potential 1 in 10 error rate going forward. I would certainly encourage any consumer who has a question about their coverage or about their plan selection choice to be able to contact the plan of their choice to get additional information. Any consumer who has a question, how about every consumer, that every consumer should have a question because they don't know who it is. Tom Miller is a former member of the National Advisory Council for the Department of Health and Human Services and a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. Tom, good to see you. I mean, anybody who's got a question, if you enrolled on healthcare.gov, you better have a question because we don't know who the one out of four are who think they have insurance but don't. That's absolutely right. Uh, it's almost the motto should be, don't trust, do verify. You can't be sure of just about anything under this law. We know that the administration will eventually admit to some of its errors at the last possible moment when it has no other alternative, which is what it did this afternoon. They did not want to release the numbers, and the press, most of the press, was really pressing them, saying, let us know how many are we talking about and finally they came out, came out and said it's one in four for october november and it's one in ten for december since the relaunch of the website but this is the, this is all they're willing to admit to at this point in terms of whatever forms have gone wrong whatever submissions have gone wrong and now tom you know you sort of hear some hubris almost in the response saying it's on you you know you the only way we're going to get this fixed basically is you better start calling. The American people better do yet another thing to ensure that they have coverage. They're just trying to power their way through all of the mistakes, the evasions, the delays, uh, the misrepresentations, and then leave it in the hands of uh, the private sector partners who are supposed to clean up the mess. Uh, the insurers will be stuck with some of this. Obviously, patients will be inconvenienced. It's a big guessing game. Uh, and I would expect that these early estimates as to their errors are very carefully crafted to look better than they turn out to be. Do we have reason to believe, though, that they can somehow fix this? Because we've been told that the insurance companies, who by all accounts are working to try to set this right, to the extent they can identify people, are trying to do it by hand, doing That's comparisons right. and so on. But we're up against a deadline here for people who lost their coverage unexpectedly, thanks to the law, and now are, are not going to have it on January 1 unless they can, you know, right now they lost their coverage, but they think they have coverage, so they need to figure this out and get back to those people and have those people re-enroll by December 23rd. Do we think that's going to happen? 
No, well, let's let's break that like break this down. This is supposed to be a state of the art high tech system. So first, you may have to mail in your application because the website doesn't work. Then your insurer is going to have to check each application by hand, and then you still have to then place a phone call to find out whether anything's accurate and have a conversation. This is not state of the art shopping experience, and it's far short of what average private sector web based uh, consumer retail service is like. You'd be out of business if you did this in the private sector. Wow. And then over on the insurance subsidy side, uh, you know, for the subsidies that are supposed to make your premiums more, you know, handleable, um, they're, they're asking the insurance companies to just guesstimate what kind of subsidy each of the enrollees is going to get and the government's going to cut them a check. All right, Tom, thank you for being here. You're welcome. And while the enrollment problems continue, we are also seeing a series of new reports raising worries about patient access to doctors under Obamacare. We told you about some of this last night. Some doctors are now saying they don't want to and cannot even afford to participate in these new health care exchanges. Dr. Theodore Mazur is an ear, nose, and throat doctor in California and one of the physicians who has expressed some concern. First of all, doctor, what can we do about this throat eye? I, I, no, no, just kidding. I, I know you're not on the <laughs> clock right now. <laughs> all right, here's my real That's question okay. to you. What specifically is the, is the beef out in California about the reimbursement that, that leads you to say doctors don't want to join these exchanges? I wouldn't say it's a beef. What I would say is that people have to make a decision now whether to participate in these exchange plans. When the exchanges offered participation earlier this year, they just said, would you participate with no details? And a lot of doctors were very skeptical about what did that mean as far as the viability of their practice. We train to take care of patients. That's the bottom line here. But in order to take care of patients, you have to be able to keep your doors open, pay your overhead, pay your staff. When we're offered rates through the exchanges that don't cover that expense, that means that not only can't we see these new patients, we can stay open for the patients we're currently taking care of. We train to take care of all patients, whether they're going to be exchange patients, they're going to be Medicaid patients, they're going to be commercial patients. The exchanges have not been as open as they should have been, and we're trying to work here in California with Covered California to get that transparency so that we know as physicians, can we participate? Patients should All be right, getting accurate information, and they're not. Let me, and I apologize to the viewers for this. We're having some technical difficulties with your studio. It seems to be resolved now, and for the random full screen of Barack Obama and his uncle. Um, okay, but here, let me, let's get specific, because I understand that, that you gave an example about Medicare paying about $76 for return office visits for Medicare patients. So if they have to go back for a follow-up, they get about 76 bucks. But in California, the Medicare reimbursement is much lower no, that was actually a misstatement in the original language put out by the examiner today. The, what, what, what I was trying to explain to them is that in my area of California, in San Diego, Medicare pays roughly $76 for a return office visit. Okay. Medi-Cal, the Medicaid program, pays 24 And the exchanges are offering payments someplace in between those two numbers, and in some cases, pretty close to the Medi-Cal number. The reality is $24 doesn't cover the cost of taking care of a patient. That's why there's problems getting doctors taking care of Medicaid patients in California. We cannot have the exchanges offering such low rates for patients who are moving out of the PPO market or the right. other individual markets that they've right. been squeezed out It's not an incentive for the doctors to participate. So what will happen then for those Californians who find themselves with no choice but to join a program under the exchange? Well, we're dealing with what's called narrow networking, and it's coming about because the physician's making a decision whether or not to participate, and by plans, only contracting with a smaller number of doctors for some of the exchange products. If you put enough people in those plans and you don't have enough doctors participating, you end up with a bottleneck, which means you're not doing what this was all about, improving access to care. Last question for you. Cal Covered California claims that they have over 60,000 unique physicians available through the Covered California plans. Uh, do you buy that number? I really don't. And we've been trying here at California Medical Association to understand those numbers. I can tell you in my community, I can't find a specialist yet who has actually signed up with any of these contracts. Some of the plans, for instance, Blue Shield, are accessing us under our PPO contracts when we did not sign up with the exchange product. Right. Right. That may be where some of those numbers are coming from, but it's That's not as broad as they're, as they're broadcasting. All right, Doc, stick around. I'm going to come back to you during the commercial break, and we're going to fix this throat by the, by the B block. Thank you, sir. All right.